Right hand hitters. That's a fair foul ball. That baseball clearly should have been called a fair ball by Angel Hernandez, but I'm not sure if Angel has sold his soul to the devil himself to protect his job. I don't know what's going on, but the dude, he's never going to get fired, whether it's because of blown calls behind the plate or down the line. He's completely secure. But anyways, what's going on, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. There was a lot of action from yesterday's games. There was four, maybe even five walk-offs. I can't remember the exact amount. Mike Trout and Shohei Otani are subject to even more memes after they go off, but did the Angels win? We'll talk about that. And Milwaukee, they were blessed by the baseball gods because the Pittsburgh Pirates, sometimes they just don't know how to play baseball. Remember guys, if you're going to any baseball games or concerts anytime soon, use code FUZZY on SeatGeek to save 20 bucks off your entire order. And also a big time favor, if you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We are less than 2,000 subs away from 400,000. I wanna try and get there before the Home Run Derby and the All-Star Game because I'm going, I'm gonna be vlogging. I think it would be a fun milestone to hit before we get there. So we do have a breaking trade. The Rays are acquiring 30-year-old Christian Bethencourt. No, I did not have a lisp. It is Bethencourt. He has 15 extra base hits, 19 RBIs, and an almost 100 OPS plus in 56 games. He can play first base. He can play catcher. The Rays, this is a perfect player for them. And the A's get 25-year-old Cal Stevenson, who gets on base, and 23-year-old Christian Fernandez, who has a very impressive 13 and a half strikeouts per nine this year. So not a bad trade for either side. And also, let me go ahead and show this picture right here because these are going to be the starters in the All-Star game. So you guys can sound off in the comments who do you think got snubbed. In my opinion, Jordan Alvarez should 100% be starting at designated hitter in the American League. And Xander Bogarts not even being an option at shortstop. That wasn't very good. Ty France maybe got snubbed. So let me know who got robbed. Julio Rodriguez, Mr. J-Rod, started off this game by doing his best Wolf of Wall Street impression. He was crawling, trying to get to third base as he was tagged out. He's just too fast. That gravity had to slow him down. You know, science, am I right? Dylan Moore stays driving in runs, and J.P. Crawford found himself with another RBI extra base hit, and we have to talk about J-Rod one more time because look at this cannon of an arm. 99.6 miles an hour. That is the fastest throw from any Mariner in StatCast history. Anyways, the Blue Jays tied up, and nothing happens until the 11th inning when A. Eugenio Suarez walks it off with a three-run missile. He has 14 home runs. 44 RBIs and a 126 OPS plus and it couldn't be happening to a better guy because he's been struggling over the last year and a half so good for Mr. Suarez. Okay now I'm gonna go fast forward to the seventh in this one when Rake Lamb aka Jake Lamb but his nickname is Rake and MLB the show he brings it within one and Mookie ties it in the ninth on a sack fly and LA gets Will Smith one of their better hitters up to the dish with runners on. Smith is able to signal the left field and that right there is a walk-off victory for a very good Dodgers team. They're third in team OPS as an offense and number one in team ERA as a pitching staff. Yeah, that'll get the job done almost every single time. So this next game really hurt me, mostly because one of my favorite prospects in all of baseball, Nolan Jones, finally made his debut, and he was fantastic. He had an RBI double in his first at-bat, and Franimal, he got into one. So he's been a machine lately, four home runs in his last 31 at-bats, and even Aaron Savali pitched a gem. One run to Benny Biceps in the third, and that was all that the Royals could muster off of Savali. But then Terry Francona kind of had a brain fart. His decision-making has not been the best as of late. That's a two-run pimp job to Whit Merrifield. And then Sam Henges was torn up by the Royals as Michael Taylor walks it off. So that's a nice win for Kansas City, but now the Guardians are a game under 500 after losing five straight. This division is probably the worst in all of baseball, at least in my opinion, which is surprising because I thought the Twins were going to be better. Even though the Twins are playing well, I thought the White Sox were going to be decent. I thought the Tigers were definitely going to be better than they are. So the AL Central kind of stinky this year. Have you guys seen this meme of Otani and Tungsten O'Doyle basically saying that Shohei Otani and Mike Trout can do crazy things, but the Angels will still find a way to lose? Yeah, it happened again. Mike Trout hit a three-run nuke, had a stolen base, and right after the Orioles got two runs courtesy of, I think his name was Ramon or something, Urias, and then Mount Castle had a single, Otani left the yard as well. So Otani and Trout combined for six hits, four RBIs, and a stolen base. Yet the Orioles basically snatched the soul straight out of the Halos fan base chest as they torched Rizal Iglesias for three runs in the bottom of the ninth. He has not been earning that massive payday that he got in the offseason. That's a walk-off victory for Trey Mancini and the Orioles are on a six 
game winning streak. So let's go ahead and talk about the final walk off from yesterday. If you're a Reds fan, you know that runs were going to be at a premium and that's because you're facing Shane McClanahan. And that's why this home run from Brandon Drury, it was all the more impressive. He now has a career high 18 home runs, which is the most since he was an extra base machine back with the Diamondbacks in 2016, 2017. Both Shane and Luis Castillo of the Reds were fantastic. They only gave up one run each. Shane went six with eight strikeouts. Luis went seven with eight punchies. Luis Castillo has some of the nastiest stuff for any right-handed pitcher in baseball, so I hope that he gets traded before the deadline because I want to see him on a winning team. But now we have some controversy because the umpire calls a balk with a runner on third, so that means it was a walk-off balk, and it seemed like the pitcher was just moving his glove to get the signs again from the catcher, but you can't do that while you're on the rubber, so he should have stepped off. I feel like, yeah, that's kind of a petty rule, but you know what? A rule is a rule, and I guess... It is a box, so there it is. The Reds come away with the victory. Manny Machado, we saw in the intro of today's video, he is your 2022 starting third baseman in the All-Star Game in the National League. This guy is going to walk into the Hall of Fame. He's going to cartwheel into the Hall of Fame if he keeps this up the next three or four years. He's hitting 315 with 50 RBIs and a whopping 4.5 F-War on the season already. Blake Snell put the Giants in a dang blender. He struck out 11 in just six innings. Nomar Mazzara brought home two on two singles in the sixth and the eighth and then Jake Cronenworth added an RBI as well. Nick Martinez was credited with a three-inning save, but he wasn't very good, so the Giants either way fall to 41 and 41, and honestly, they're just kind of an old, boring team. They need to call up Elliot Ramos and Marco Luciano and have them stay on the big league club for the rest of the year. Brian De La Cruz gave Pablo Lopez an early run after this double in the second inning, and Pablo struck out five in this pretty solid outing. He allowed just one earned run and got even more run support later on with a two-run home run for from Garrett Cooper. Anytime I say Cooper's name, I think of Interstellar because that's like the main character's name. Cooper's hitting 307 with 40 RBIs and a near 140 OPS plus. Lindor had his 14th home run. He's driven in 58 RBIs, which is very solid production from a shortstop. But it doesn't matter because Tanner Scott, he walks one, but he pretty much has a 1-2-3 inning for his 11th save of the year. This Marlins team is a lot of fun to watch. They're 40 and 42 and they're getting stronger as the season progresses. This next game was over before it even started. Started. Like, I don't know if the Yankees are in Boston's head or something because Rafi went off for five RBIs and the Red Sox still lost. But I mean, this is just a tough pill to swallow. Glaber plates won and Donaldson has been scorching hot as of late. I follow a ton of Yankees fans and Donaldson was getting a lot of criticism almost as much as Gallo at one point. Now, speaking of Gallo, right after Matt Carpenter doubled home DJ, Joey was blessed by the twilight zone. So if you've ever played outfield, you know that a ball going above the lights when it's not really nighttime, but it's not really evening. Evening, right into the twilight, the ball just completely disappears. I feel bad for Mr. Arroyo. So that could have been an inside the park home run, but Joey has gifted a free two run triple and is thrown out at home. Carpenter hits a home run. He now has a 240 OPS plus and nine home runs and 59 at bats. The Boston Red Sox tried to mount a comeback, but the Yankees went off for 12 in this one. They're four and one against the Red Sox. And even though they're four and one, I'm not gonna lie, most of these games have been pretty close. I think only two of the six games have been won by more than two runs. So yeah, the Boston Boston Red Sox, they're trying their absolute best. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the improved Atlanta Braves. Yes, they are improved, even though they're coming off a World Series W, they are infinitely better in my opinion. Matt Olson hits a home run. Michael Harris the second doubles in two more as he stays red hot, and look at this. Ronald had his power zapped by the aliens from Space Jam the last two weeks, but there he is breaking out a 450 foot home run. Now, I wanna show off this home run from Juan Soto because he's now hitting 425 with the near 600 on base percentage over his last 11 games. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, back to the Braves. William Contreras goes yard. Danzy Swanson plates Michael Harris and staying with Michael Harris. This kid, so far, is easily the pick for the NL Rookie of the Year. He has a two-war in 39 games. He's hitting 310 with seven home runs and a 143 WRC+. Plus. Even Marcelo Zuna gets in on the scoring as he drives in two. And yeah, I would not want to face the Braves in a five-game series, seven-game series. I don't care what kind of series it is. They are lethal in every single facet of baseball. So the Minnesota Twins found themselves up by three after a home run from Correa and Max Kepler had an RBI single. And look at this wizardry from Byron Buxton. That's why his glove is platinum. I don't 
don't even know how he was able to make this play happen. But if you're a Twins fan, you would know that that was probably the last good thing that happened for a while because the Rangers absolutely teed off on your pitching staff. They scored one on a hit by pitch, one on a sack fly. Rookie Josh Smith, who they got in the Joey Gallo trade, singles home Cole Calhoun, and then Seager demolished a game-winning three-run laser beam. He has 17 home runs, 42 RBIs. He just has to find a way to get on base more as he has a 308 on base percentage compared to a 394 on base percentage from last year. So Brett Martin closes it out for his first save and the Rangers get back in the win column. Another 6-5 to five ball game happened down in Arizona. KB and Josh Rojas, they each traded long balls and Sergio Alcantara blasted a two-run home run. I didn't even know that he was on the Diamondbacks, but okay. Chad Cool was not his best self yesterday, so he had to rely on his offense to get back in the game. There's one run. Okay, there's a second straight free RBI. That one ties it up. You have Daza putting the Rockies up by one on an RBI ground out, and hopefully we can have something more exciting happen. Thank you, KB. 423 feet. Chris Bryant is now hitting 301 with 10 extra base hits in his first 100-ish at-bats with the Rockies. So we saw the Guardians blow a game, and the Twins also lost, so it would be nice if the White Sox lost this game as well, just... I'm speaking as a Cleveland fan. Luis Robert hit one to Niagara Falls. He's got 10 home runs, 11 stolen bases, and three outs above average. The kid is stupid talented. He's kind of like a lesser version of J-Rod this year. That was all the White Sox can muster off of school ball as J. Mir Candelario finally looked like 2020, 2021 version of himself. He had a two-run home run in the sixth and then a go-ahead single in the seventh. Luckily, the Tigers kept on scoring with even more runs after a Willie Castro single and a Javier Baez double. By the way, there was an error in their sum to make it seven runs. Michael Fulmer continues to dominate opposing lineups, and I would not be surprised at all if we saw him replace Gregory Soto as the full-time closer in Detroit. By the way, the Tigers, just like the Orioles, are also on a six-game winning streak. So we had a fun one down in Milwaukee. Keston Hira is nearly hitting 300 with an OPS over 1,000 the last two weeks, and the Brewers lineup, they clawed their way back into it after giving up the lead in the fourth inning. Wong and Peterson both do their jobs, and so does Willie Adamas. Willie Adamas came in clutch not just on that home home run, which actually was a crucial home run because Pittsburgh came around to score one and it would have been two if Willie Adamas didn't have an absolute host piece for an arm. I don't know why they sent that runner considering Cabrian Hayes, I believe, was coming up next and he destroys lefties. He hits basically 320 for his career. I don't know why that happened, but regardless, Josh Hader, he has given his 26th save and the Brewers are now 9-2 against the Pittsburgh Pirates this year. Now, this next one, I always love recapping these kinds of games because they're so dang easy. Alec Bohm hit a home run in the sixth. Zach Wheeler, he continues to age like fine wine, as my good friend Giraffnik Mark says. Wheeler went seven shutout and he got more help in the eighth from the same guy, Alec Bohm, with his second home run of the game. And I'm not sure if the Phillies are going with closer for committee, but if Brad Hand is the dude, not too bad. I don't want to jinx him, but he has been very good. And even Sir Anthony Dominguez has been lights out this year. So those two guys have been game changers for the Phillies. Now, the last game, I almost feel bad for showing it because the Astros versus the A's, it's just not fair. Um, the Astros have yet to lose against Oakland this year, and that didn't change. Jordan Alvarez had an RBI double. Again, he got robbed of the starting DH spot. I want to mention that one more time. Bregman now has 11 home runs, 44 RBIs, and an almost 120 five OPS plus. Even Martin Maldonado has been a machine lately. Three home runs and an 820 OPS over the last two weeks. Tucker and Gurriel making an eight spot for Jose Urquidy who goes eight innings and the Houston Astros are 55 and 28. Not bad. Not bad. So before we show off the web gems, I want to do this day in MLB history. 85 years ago today, Joe DiMaggio hit for his first career cycle. And also Derek Jeter 11 years ago today had hit number 3000. I still remember this like it was yesterday. Don't forget to subscribe. We're on the road to 400K. Okay, enjoy. steps and I think the other thing he did well there get the ball get rid of the ball use the ground that's just named to his fourth all-star game hammers that one great play by Devers Raffi with a long throw oh yes he cut him down well that had double written all over it down the line the two run double in the sixth jumps on the first pitch and Muncy goes up to get it 
<laughs> With the first pick in the NBA draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Max Muncie. Josh Harrison softly to center. Green coming hard. He dives and he makes the grab. To his right, to his left, going back, and this one coming in. Superman style to end the seventh in Chicago. Tenth All-Star game. What a play by VR. And they get him. Gets a look at the baseball, knows he's got that strong throw. Yeah. Come back from three and one. Popped up behind third. Rochella has a long run. So does Gordon. And oh, what a catch by him.